Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. There's a easterly wind today, so it's very, very cold. Um, and jobs I've got for today is to start making my willow hoops um, for Christmas wreaths. Um, I'm gonna make two different types of hoop. I'm gonna make ones using um, fresh willow, uh, which I tend to use for my smaller wreaths. And then I'm gonna make some wreath hoops with buff willow as well. And the buff willow needs to be soaked. Um, so we'll soak some of that in a minute. So all I'm gonna do first of all is, is cut my willow down and then we'll go to the shed and start working with it. I'm quite lucky, I've got several different colors of willow here. So this is a really nice orangey color. That's lovely. And then down here, this is my favorite. This is a really, really dark color. And so I like that one as well. I use a lot of the green willow as well, which I have in my hedgerows around here. Um, when they're cut fresh like this, they're all flexible straight away. So you can turn them into a wreath as soon as you cut them. So I'll go ahead and carry on cutting this willow. I put this willow in last year. So it's not huge and also I had a bit of trouble with my goats leaning over the fence and eating it um, but I tend to do a lot more of the larger wreaths where I use the the buff willow which I get from Musgrove willows in Somerset anyway um, so I only need enough for, um, to fulfill a much smaller number of wreaths here um, and table centres as well this is very good for that And I know this seems quite harsh chopping this willow down to stumps, but it will regenerate really well. So I'm going to leave the ones at the very end for now because I think that's enough willow for me to be working with for what I do need to do today. Okay, I'm back in the shed now. Excuse the sniffing, that cold easterly wind's got right up my nose. Okay, so I've got in here, this is a length of the buff willow that I've got from my Musgrove willows, as I mentioned. Um, so it is quite bendy but the advice is to soak it which is what i'm going to do because i think it, it will snap and if that's what i've always done before that's what i'll stick with um this is actually these whips are quite a lot skinnier than the ones i usually use so i usually would use five lengths per wreath ring um but i think i'm going to use seven because otherwise i just don't think it's going to be substantial enough so i'm not going to soak all the willow i've got in one go I'm just going to soak it in small batches because last year I made the mistake of soaking all of the willow in one go. Then you mellow it for a couple of hours and then I had to make all these rings before it lost its flexibility. And I found by the end of making the hoops that actually, the um, well this is an example from last year, the willow started snapping because it had dried too much by the time I'd got to the end of making the hoops. So I think I'm going to soak enough for about seven hoops at a time and then that means um, I shouldn't have problems with this snapping because you can see this has got kinks and snaps in various places, it's not really good enough to use. Uh, that's why this one is really grotty because it just ended up being chucked to one side and not even used. And obviously that's very wasteful especially when you're paying for the willow as I was in this case. Um, so that's why I'm going to do it in smaller batches. So I'll just spin you around and show you the willow and how I'm going to soak it. Okay, so these are my lengths of willow. I believe these are the seven foot whips, but I will just write that on the screen so that you can see um, whether or not I'm right on that. And I will also pop up on the screen how many hours 
um, that it is that they do actually need to be soaked for. Okay, so I've put the willow into this sheet trough with a pond liner. I've added the water and then what I've done is I've just weighted the willow down with some crocs just to make sure that it's completely submerged in the water. Uh, and now all we have to do is leave that to soak. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to process the willow that we've just cut fresh um, outside into um, cane lengths that we can use, okay? Um, so to do that, we'll be chopping off all of the side shoots. And, and when you've got little tiny side shoots like this, don't discard them, don't throw them away because they're actually quite useful for putting into wreaths themselves. Um, let's see this one. So this one isn't an example of any in, but you know, you could see very easily that you could add um, the coloured willow in. And if you've got the oranges and sort of the plummy colour ones here, I mean, that orange would look really nice contrasted with that. So don't throw these little ones away, keep those because you can definitely use them later. And you'll also find you might have really thick stubby bits at the ends. Don't discard those either um, because what you can do, if you give them a really nice sharp point at the end, okay, this, I always do a sharp point at the end so I remember where the bottom is and then just cut them across the top. That can be planted into the soil. So you can plant that and then next year I would be able to harvest willow from that and that's exactly what I did with the willow that you saw me cutting from earlier um, so definitely don't discard those I will just put it in some water so that um, it will last until I get an opportunity to plant it because I don't think I'm going to get to plant it today so I'll put that in some water you can see the bits here that the goats had nibbled where they've gone all black I've got five pygmy goats. They're, they don't make me any money, they're just pets. Because I like them. I used to have an English milking goat and she was a real character. I use green willow from my paddock hedges for doing autumn wreaths um, and of course then the, the willow has usually still got leaves on it so you do have to actually take the leaves off as well but at this time of year you, you've only got very few on and in fact normally at this time of year you wouldn't have any on but it's been a really funny year this year. Okay so I've got much shorter lengths of the fresh willow than I do of the buff willow and that's one of the reasons I use them for making shorter, I'm sorry, smaller bases um, because I just haven't got lengths that are quite long enough. Um, so what I'm going to do now is make some of my small bases. My small bases are half the size of my front door wreath rings. So that's a front door size um, and I make my smaller ones half the size of this and it's well worth noting if you're buying a wreath and you see two prices particularly if you're not looking at them in person if you're looking them online on a website and you think oh gosh that one's really expensive that one's half the price of that it's worth noting it's probably half the size as well um, so don't just be put off by something because it's more expensive because it, it it will have used more material to make it and it would have taken longer for the person to make. Um, so it doesn't mean they're just charging, a, you know, an extortionate amount or, or ripping you off. It's just probably because it's a bigger wreath. Um, so my smaller wreaths are half the size and, and half, the, half the cost. Okay, so what I need to do now is go through the willow and 
find lengths that I can use for the wreaths and then lengths that are probably more um, in keeping with table decorations. Um, you know, some of these shorter ones, they're gonna be a bit too small for wreaths. So we'll just pop those out of the way. They will definitely get used, um, just not for what we're doing right now. Okay, so you've made the first hoop. So if you can see, this one's coming on the outside there. So you want to do the same with that one, just a little bit further along, and then bend that one in, the same as the first one. Again, make sure you're putting it through the same way. Don't worry if it's sticking out, because we'll, we'll cut them off at the end. Okay. This one's got a bit of a chunkier end, so I'm just gonna try and make it a little bit bendier. If the ends are too chunky, sometimes you have to cut them off uh, and use the, the more flexible whip end. There we are. So what I'm going to do now is just go around and snip off the edges. Okay, so you can see I've just cut the fat ends off um, and that's the hoop that I'm left with. So that's with the fresh willow. Um, and when we finish soaking the buff willow, we'll come back and we'll do the same process with the buff willow. Okay, hello everyone, it's the next day now still just as cold still a bit of an easterly wind going on um, so i'm not looking forward to getting the willow out of its uh, soaking in the water but i find doing this sort of thing with gloves on even if they say they're waterproof i just find it really really fiddly so anyway let's have a look and see how the willow's looking okay so i'll take the crocs off that were weighing it down last year i didn't have a trough or anything like this so what I actually did was I put the willow in my parents pond and when I took it out it was just covered in pond weed and I really regretted it because I had to spend ages washing the pond weed off but it's definitely bendier because it's a lot easier to get it out than it was to get it in. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the willow in a towel now and that's so that it can mellow for a couple of hours before I start working with it. And it also will stop it from drying out. Because there's a cold easterly wind outside, it's definitely a good idea to have it mellowing somewhere indoors because the wind, as you know, with like even your soil, how quickly it dries out in the wind. So I've got it in here. It's, it's actually a really damp shed in here because it's got um, a galvanised sitting. I mean, this is just covered in condensation. Um, it's really hard for me to work in here in the winter. So we're going to leave that now to mellow just for a couple of hours and then we'll come and, and work with the willow and shape it into our willow hoops. Okay, I'm back. The willow should be just about ready to use now. Um, so I always try and keep a hoop um, from previous um, hoop making so that I've got a size template so that I always am working the same size. Um, so here's the size that I'm working with for my front door wreaths. Um, and I'm gonna use seven um, whips of willow for each wreath frame. And if you like, you can cover these with moss. Um, I just use moss from my garden and from my paddocks because I want them to have a sustainability and um, I don't want to have a big carbon footprint by flying moss in or traveling moss in from somewhere else. But you can use other things um, to pad your um, wreath ring out. If you, want, you can use hay or straw or, or anything that will hold a bit of moisture. I tend to find because door wreaths are going outside, 
foliage will last a really, really, really long time without any moisture anyway. Um, you know, if you notice, if you walk through your local woods or things, sometimes you'll see where they've done tree work and they've chopped the spruce and the, and the fir and things down the floor and they've chopped it down ages ago, but it still looks perfectly fine. And that's the principle I go with not using moss on my dories. I think that, however, if you wanted to use things like for example, I just happen to have here like Brachyglottis. Um, this is the type of foliage that might benefit from having a little bit of retained moisture from the moss and things like that. And I do tend to use things like this more on the table centres where I've used moss and again in the autumn and autumn wreaths where I've used moss. Um, but during Christmas there are so many fantastic seasonal foliages that don't need moss and they're, they're really popular at Christmas time that I tend to use the traditional foliages like that and save the things like this for the autumn. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start making the hoop. So I'll get my seven whips so I don't accidentally add an extra one in. Okay, so here are my seven whips and really importantly what I've just done is I've made sure I've re-wrapped the remaining ones up in a towel because if they start to dry out too quickly they will snap and they will kink and then you don't have such a nice finished effect. In most cases if you're going to cover the whole wreath base that doesn't really matter but if you're looking to perhaps do a half exposed one then you do want it to be nicely bound together. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take the two ends and um, I will just need my template for this just to make sure that I get it about the right size. Okay. Don't worry if the first one's not completely round because you can manipulate it in a minute and work with it to get it to a nice round shape. And that's another reason you don't want it to dry out because the buff willow will become less pliable as we go on. Okay, so that's about right. Okay, so that's the first one. And then all I do with the second one is make sure I come in on the same, and this is going to be the back, so come in on the same, on the inside of the circle, um, just a little bit away, and we'll keep going around with our seven in just the same way. So I'm just going to, I like to get it as tight as I can, and then I just work the willow a little bit with my hands just to avoid snapping it. Unfortunately, this one has got a little bit of a kink. It does happen. Um, hopefully, it will be hidden when I've finished. And if not, I'll make sure that area gets the foliage. Sometimes the ends come out and you just have to work them back in again. Third one. Um, now, I made a mistake the first year I made these. I made loads and loads and loads of them. And then I left them in my shed. And where the willow had been damp, they all went mouldy. And washing the mould off was an absolute nightmare. So that's why I'm only going to make a few at a time because I'm going to store them in the house and <laughs> not that it's much warmer in my house. A bit like everyone this year, I'm trying to avoid putting the heating on. Um, we have got a, a wood burner so at least one room can be warm and that's where the wreaths will get to hang out. I probably will hang them, so literally. And I'll hang them just again so they can air. Okay, so that's three. If 
anyone's been watching any of my videos, I apologise for the amateur filming and things, but I think, like with anything, you've got to start somewhere, and I'm hoping the more videos I'll do, the better they'll be, and hopefully more informative and interesting for you as well. I don't even have a smartphone, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people who is really reluctant because I feel as if we're being forced by society to have one. And everyone's saying, oh, you've got to get a smartphone. How do you manage without one? And I manage very easily. I'm filming on a tablet. So when I'm at home, you know, I can still use social media and things like everybody else. It just means that when I'm out and about, nobody can get hold of me. What do you do if there's an accident or, you know, you've got a flat tyre or something? And I always say, well, I do what we would have done before mobile phones. And it has happened. I've got a punch. Ah, oh, there you are. There's one that's snapped. And that's why I always soak just a couple of extra just in case that happens. So that's quite unfortunate. You yeah, know, I, I got a punch a few years ago. And I just had to walk to the nearest property and see if, you know, I could borrow a phone. Um, I have got an emergency phone, it's just whether or not it's got any credit on it, got any battery on it, or even if I've even got it, which is the usual case. Got to remember that I'm one short in a minute, like one that's snapped, got to remember to get it out. I'm a bit disappointed that that's got a bit of a kink in it there. I don't think I'd be a very good basket weaver, but you know, that's what this willow's used for, and I think it's an incredible talent these people have. Right, so I'll just get one more because that's one short. And we'll work out where we need to go. There, I think. You can use, you know, if you're a forager and you haven't got willow, I used to make reef bases from um, laurel. That's very flexible and bendy. Okay, so the back is where all the willow is. All I'm gonna do now is just chop the end because I don't think they're quite long. Sometimes you can just get them to bend round, but in this case, they're not going to. So chop them at an angle so that when the wreath's hung on the door, it you know isn't something to stick out. Oh. Okay, so that's the back where you've done your chops, and then that's the front there. So, um, there you are, see, 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 it's for the same size, so my template worked. Okay. Um, you can also, if you're making a wreath for yourself, it doesn't necessarily have to be circular. I think the reason it's circular is to do with um, celebrating the year as a circle, sort of from beginning to end and then starting again. Um, but you can um, take things like birch in um, clubs. So we've got some willow here. You know, you can take a, a little bunch of birch or willow or any twigs like that and you can do a square. You can tie and corner, and you can put little ribbons in each corner, or you could put um, little pine cones or things. So with, with decorating your front door, it, it really doesn't have to be a wreath. You, you can think outside the box. Okay, so we've got our next seven. Got to remember to recover the willow so we don't have any more breakages. The willow in itself, isn't 
too expensive, but because it's quite a large packet, it's the postage that um, is really expensive, unless you can collect. Um, I'm definitely going to grow more of my own willow next year. Um, I've already allocated where I'm going to grow it to. Um, and I've actually, well, at the beginning of the video when I was making the fresh wreaths, I've, I've got all these little willow um, cuttings just to, to plant and they'll, they'll grow on really well. Willow likes to grow where it's quite damp, so it's quite handy because the air, I've got lots of the areas I have here. Um, I've got a really high water table. I remember when I planted my bare root roses last November. I planted them into water when I dug down. I was like, oh, are they going to be all right? And actually, they were fine. I don't think he'll go around again. I think I, I don't know if I do this left-handed or right-handed. I think I'm a little bit ambidextrous. I do some things with both. So I don't have to make these wreaths today, so that's why they can go and dry. But what I probably will do one day is my, one of my least favorite jobs. Um, is make the ribbons. <laughs> I'm not, although I, I'm quite artistic and I like doing things like this, I'm, I'm not such a fan of making the ribbons. What I should have done is ask my sister to do it. She likes doing stuff like that, but she's very busy. She made this apron actually, sewn by Emma Rose. And for Christmas last year, I asked her if she could make me one. I said, it has to be very tough and durable. And so far, so good, it's been excellent. I know these are really cheap to buy, these rings, but there's something quite satisfying, I think about making a whole wreath from start to finish by yourself. I always used to give people cakes and things for Christmas. Um, this year, I, I don't know if I'm going to do any baking. They might, they might get something made of willow. Unfortunately, that one snapped as well, but it snapped right on the tip. So I'm not going to add another one for that. I'm going to consider that that will still be seven, even with the snapped one. might do a video on how to make the bows but I consider myself very amateur at that indeed so we'll see I'll have to do a couple of practices and see if I can make it like it makes any sense that was snapped as well it's really annoying right one left I think we'll put that one in here I wonder if it's because they've not had enough time to mellow or they've had too much time to mellow or they're starting, they don't feel like they're starting to dry out. I 
in case there's the back, there's the front, I'll go ahead and cut those. front tell the important thing is when you're making a roof to remember where the front and the back is by looking at your cuts okay so what I'll do now then I'll carry on making the rest of the wreaths that I've soaked the weave the willow for because obviously that has to be done now otherwise it would have to be re-soaked um, which would be quite time consuming so I'll go ahead and do that um, I haven't quite finished I think I've got six done here and I've got a few more to make Okay, six of those, and then I've got the fresh ones I made as well. So these are what I need for my first orders, and then I'll re-soak another batch um, for my next orders next weekend. Um, but I'm going to end that video here, so thanks very much for watching. Good luck with making your wreath rings, and I'll see you in the next video.